I don't want to do either of those things. Yeah, but if you had to, though. We set the scene. We have a choice. We must decide on the correct answer. I'm Kyle. And I am Nathan. And this is If You Had To, though. Oh, we're getting through the episodes, Nathan. We are on 47. You said that like it was a chore, Kyle. It is a chore. Oh, we're getting through these episodes. Slogging through. It's like a monkey on my back. It really is. Like, we can't rest until we get to episode 1000. That's like that... right. I mean, that's that was the curse placed on us by that ancient witch when we, dis- when we um, disturbed her tomb. Yeah, we were travelling through Egypt a couple of years ago, and we uncovered this ancient tomb, and there was some writing on the tomb, and we decided to read it out and chant it out, um, as you do. As and you do. this witch got summoned. I mean, I actually took... Instagram existed a few years ago, right? I, t- I took some selfies in front of the tomb. You did, and that really pissed off this witch. She rose from the tomb, the sky turned black, lightning crackled, and she put did a curse pop? on us. It snap crackled and popped, Nathan. <laughs> you were there. Don't act so I shocked. I've forgotten. It was, it was so traumatic, Carl. I can't remember. And yeah, she it... put a curse on us and said, you must do 1,000 podcasts. I remember that. I remember yeah. her bony fingers as she said, I curse you, you and your ugly friend. And we looked at each other to figure out which one of us she was talking about. <laughs> yes. Um, and it's like, I curse you both. You can never rest. Not until you've filmed, recorded, however podcasts are produced. 1,000 podcast episodes. I, I mean, of course she doesn't know how podcasts are produced. She's been in a tomb for a thousand years. Yeah. I mean, also, she said this all in ancient Egyptian. We did have to um, Google Translate it. Yeah, we held the fo- like we waited for her to do her big th- spiel, and then we held the phone up and um, listened back to it. And then we made the shocked face. Like, and after she had said it, she looked a bit confused that we weren't so shocked. Yeah, we didn't. Her normal when she normally curses people, they usually look quite concerned, but we <gasps> didn't have that look on our faces, so she was quite confused. But, yeah, um, it took us a few moments to realise that she had cursed us for all eternity to walk the earth. I mean, actually, you say this was a, a, a few years ago. This was actually 50 years ago, back when Instagram definitely didn't exist, nor did selfies. I got, I got, I got our hired artist to, to do a drawing of us. But um, we've been cursed to never age or die. I mean, that doesn't sound like much of a curse, but also to... Um, <laughs> To do a thousand podcasts, yeah. To do a thousand podcasts. And we had, to, we had to wait until podca- podcasts were, were invented, you're invented right. and then to be less of a interesting media, because we didn't want <laughs> yeah, too we, many people to listen to it. We waited for them to start, and then we thought, there's a lot of talent out there. <laughs> let's wait until it's... Died a, down. Let's wait until podcasts are so common that anyone can do one, and there's loads of absolute idiots out there doing podcasts and then we'd fit right in Um, exactly and as long as we have a very very low listener count then we would be happy that is another part of the curse yeah we can never get more than 10 listeners (laughs) (laughs) do you know nathan we're coming up to our uh tutor nanny our two-year anniversary of the podcast i did not know that we are indeed. By the time uh, the, the the next episode we record, by the time that comes out, that will be our tutor nanny, our it two will be year our anniversary. Nanny. Yeah. You confused me by the way you said that. It was like a riddle. Like the next podcast, by the time that comes out, it will be the tutor nanny. I thought I was trying to work out the math in my head then, and that I, I don't like doing math in my head or outside of my head or anywhere. It I hurts hate math. your brain. I have never. Since the day out of school, worked anything out without a calculator. I use my fingers. If it if I can't do it on my fingers, then I don't do it. We're still talking about math, right? Excuse me. <laughs> uh, but yes, Nathan, two to nanny coming up. Our two year. Uh, can you believe we've been going almost two years just I talking cannot... shit online? I mean, honestly, Carl, you and me have been talking shit for <laughs> as long as I can remember you. 
for. But um, I did. I never believed that we would have a platform on the interwebs. Yeah, that some people actually spend their time listening to. Yes, at least two people listen to this podcast, and we appreciate both of you. Wait a minute, I listen to this podcast. Do you? Yeah. Shit. <laughs> Anyway, our most loyal fan base is ourselves. <laughs> I mean, did you not get that fan letter that I sent that I sent you to send to me? A fan letter that you sent to me to send to you? Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to bother me directly. I, I'm a little shy when it comes to talking to my my celebrity idols. I see. I so see. I thought if I'd send it to you, who I don't care about at all, you mm. could you know hand it over in a in a subtle way. Did 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 you not get it? I got a crumpled up, feces stained piece of paper through the door with your name scrawled in blood. Um, oh, that was it, was it? Yeah, Just, I. Nathan, I'm watching you. Yeah, I I thought that was um I thought that was the crazy woman down the road, so I just binned that. Oh, just binned it. Okay, I mean, mm. it's fine. Doesn't matter. I mean, it just means I have to write another letter in my blood. It's only blood. Well, what's that worth? It's not worth much. I mean, can you even sell blood for money? No. It's a stupid system we live in where you can't sell blood for money. Or buy blood for money. What kind of you can sell can blood for money? Blood banks. You can't in this country go to a blood bank and sell your blood for money. Can you not? Do you only get the I, cookie in this country? I thought you could I, sell I've your blood. I've given blood and they've never given me money. <laughs> <laughs> so unless, unless every time I've been, there was someone in the corner handing out money and I've walked past them every <laughs> single time. I'm yeah. pretty sure you don't get money. I don't think it's legal in this country to sell your blood. See, you're going to the wrong places, Nathan. You should go where I go. <laughs> the, ba- the back alleys of Professor fast Dracula's food blood bank. <laughs> oh, dear. Kyle, it's such a pleasure to see you again. Okay, so we've we've established that we uh, disturbed a witch's tomb and I go to vampire blood banks <laughs> in the first 10 minutes of the episode. And somehow they don't just kill you, they just, they keep giving you money for their blood. For my blood, yeah. yeah. Sure, surely that's a better system than killing me and then not having a source of blood to come that to you. That's right, if you were to die, I mean, well, they could just turn you. Yeah, but then they can't drink my blood. Like, it would be vampire blood. I'm not sure this is what our two listeners tune in to listen about, Kyle. It, it makes sense, though, doesn't it? Like, if if you're dra- I mean, draining does someone's it, blood... Does it make sense if you really sit down and think about it? Oh, well, now, you know what? The, this whole thing about the vampires drinking human blood doesn't always make sense. But if you think about it this way... Well, I would. If I was a vampire, I would prefer to pay someone, drink their blood, and then they go off re build all their blood cells, come back and sell themselves. it again, re- re-blood themselves, or you kill the person, have people looking for the murderer, you, and then... I mean, I would just kill someone, drain their blood, put blood in the fridge. Yeah, but then you don't have a constant supply. You just have There's that one person... There's a lot of people on the planet with blood, Kyle. Yeah, but then every How time... How greedy you... do you think I am? Very. Every time you That's murder true. someone, Nathan, you're going to have more press on you, more police looking for you. <laughs> you you are not thinking this through logically. This is a very serious matter, and you are not taking it seriously. You're right. I'm not prepared for what I would do if I were to become a vampire. I think you have, in previous episodes, actually become a vampire. No, I think I was killed by either a vampire or a werewolf. I can't remember. I can't remember what happened after that. <laughs> The world just sort of reset. I think that was a uh, different timeline anyway. It was. I'm pretty sure you've destroyed the universe at least three times since then. Yeah, and so everything's reset. I think we've established that you're not the original Carl, that the original Carl died and then I cloned him because I missed him. (laughs) Something like that. Something like that. So anyway, this week, Nathan, you have been chilling out at home, you know, doing your own thing trying to get on with your life after the events of what has ever happened over the past weeks and months. I'm I'm sure multiple things if you go and listen back to the other podcasts. I was just at home doing my exercises, um, just being a normal, cool, super cool, leather jacket wearing, badass man that I am. You you truly are the Fonz. But you you got a knock at your door. And (laughs) wouldn't you know it, Nathan... 
your neighbour and arch enemy, Mr. Oh, Winters. Wait, let me put let me just put my trousers back on before I open the door. Mr. Winters is standing before you, his glorious moustache plastered across his face, his life partner Cornelius Whiskers by his side, and they're both wearing, uh, like usually Cornelius Whiskers wears his little waistcoat, um, but both him and Mr Winters are wearing pure white shirts and pure white trousers. And... I mean, I remember, and I remember saying, what do you want, Winters and Whiskers? Nice shirts. I meant that sincerely, even though my voice makes it sound sarcastic. I mean, you do have reason to distrust them. Mr. Winters did take a photo of you naked and send it to your mother. He did make a voodoo doll of you, and he did throw you out of an aeroplane. Yes. So you do and, have um, reason to distrust him. He did abandon him. me on the island of the um, social media zombies. But he looks remorseful, and he says, Nathan! I must apologise for everything I've ever done to you. I must admit this is unexpected. I've... Me and Cornelius Whiskers, we've we've reformed. We've come to apologise to you and, and to spread the good word. And you notice that they're both wearing these lovely little badges um, that have the word stop on them. And um, he says, now, as my... As my reformed uh, group has asked me to do, I'm going around and apologising to everyone I've harmed in my life. And uh, to say sorry, I've uh, brought you some Rice crispy Squares. And he hands you over a tray of Rice crispy Squares. Well, come on in, immediately. All is we, forgiven. And he says, we, we would, but we're, we're on our way to our meeting. Why, why don't you come with us? I can't think of a single reason why not. I throw the Rice Krispies behind me, <laughs> immediately step out and slam the door. So, yeah, the three of you head off to this meeting. It doesn't meeting. matter that I go to this meeting without um, any underwear on, does it? Are you wearing trousers? I mean, that's a personal question, Carl. It's, I, I don't feel the need to answer that question right now. OK, well, I mean, if, you, if you're if you just underwearless... What a man chooses to wear in his lower half between him and God. Mm. You may get in trouble with the police along the way. The way to the uh, meeting does pass a orphanage, a schoolyard, um, a nunnery. Um, I will pass the funeral procession. Yeah, and about five churches. I'm just strutting all the way. Yeah. Feeling the breeze. So yeah, you finally get past all these things you know you pass the old people's home and you uh, get to this big building and you've never been this end of town before so you think oh okay this is this must be where um they have their nice their nice meetings and you go inside and there are a lot of people in there strangely a lot most of them are women you know oh. no no problem with that i'm glad um, i didn't put on my trousers <laughs> and uh, mr winter says now, come on, Nathan, you sit here um, and... He... Now, I just want to make 100% sure these are leather seats, right? They are all leather seats, yes. Good. I just want to make sure. I like I like a good leather seat when I sit down without wearing any trousers. And uh, yet yeah, you see all the people in the room, they're all wearing these white suits and they've all got the badges on. Is a weird coincidence? Yeah. Cornelius Whiskers pats your hand and he says, Oh, yes, my friend. Just you wait. Our leader will be out any moment. I can't wait to meet them. Yeah. Uh, so you see at the front of this hall, um, this big stage set up and the, the these big red curtains and they part. And this woman walks out and comes to the podium and she looks out at everyone and she says, um, everyone, take out your hats and your sticks and let the meeting commence. And everyone around you takes out a hat and they take out big lollipop sticks. <gasps> and you suddenly no. realise, Nathan, no. what is that this you, like? you are in the conference of the lollipop ladies. No! Now, as we've discussed in the past, the, lolly, the, uh, the uh, group of lollipop ladies are probably the most evil organisation in the entire world. 
I mean, they must be stopped, Kyle. I mean, they want all children to walk safely across the road. They must be stopped. And uh, the, the woman at the front says, And now for our leader, the Lollipop Queen. And she bows and walks off. And this ancient, rickety old lady wearing a crown steps out onto the stage. And she slams her lollipop stick into the ground three times. And everyone around you does the same. Boom, boom, boom. It is time that I retire as lollipop queen and pick a brand new queen to lead you all. And she sa- snaps her fingers and she says, bring out the bingo ball machine. No, anything but that. And the bingo ball machine is brought out and it's cranked around and around. You're mad. You're completely <laughs> mad. And a little ball pops out and she reads the name. The next heir to the lollipop kingdom shall be Mr. Winters. Mr. Winters I... looks at you. He looks at Cornelius Whiskers. <gasps> I, I don't believe it. And he starts rushing up towards the stage. And in this moment, Nathan, you know there's only one of two things that you can do. A, you either let your nemesis, your old nemesis, who seems to have reformed, but has he really, Mr. Winters, have the crown placed upon his head and And gain all all of the powers of the lollipop lady. All the power that comes with leading the lollipops. Exactly. He will gain every ounce of power that the lollipop queen has. Or... You could charge up, push him out of the way, let the crown be placed upon your head and become the very thing you hate. Oh my God, this is maybe the most difficult decision I've ever made in my life. I mean, the the lollipop queen, the power, she's welcome in every political arena around the world, whispering in their ears with her big stick. Wherever there's a road and wherever there's children that need to cross a road, she has dominion. She does indeed. So if I were to let Mr. Winters take that crown, I know that he would have that power and dominion over the world. And can I really believe that he's reformed? I mean, all the things that he's done. He sent a naked picture of me to my mum. I mean, he he, he put a World War II mine in your your stomach. He did indeed. Yeah, I'm no fan of his either. I mean, a man that evil, with that magnificent moustache. Can he ever truly be trusted? But do you really want to take on that role, Nathan? Do you want to take on the title of Lollipop Queen and everything that that involves? If I were to let that crown hit my head and become the Lollipop Queen, what would that mean? I would be given the bright yellow uniform. They'd pass over the the stick. I, I, I mean, surely if I took the crown, I could refuse. Once that crown touches your head, you're imbued with the Lollipop Queen's powers. Oh, I can see it. You're right, that crown is no ordinary crown. It's, I mean, it's bright yellow like the Lollipop Lady herself. The jewels upon it are little Lollipop heads themselves. Such power. It can't be resisted. And I know that power will go to Mr. Winter's head. But can I control that power? Could you fight it? Could I resist its influence? I mean, if I let that crown hit my head... Would I help little children cross the street safely? Betray everything that I believe in. (laughs) Because usually, usually you direct them into traffic. Yes, I'm pushing them into traffic. (laughs) I'm marching elephants over the school school roads. But but now I'll be the one telling them to watch out, dear. And I don't want them to watch out, dear. I want them to die, dear. This is such a challenge. Mr. Winters, with all that power... How long until he turns on me and uses the full power of the lollipop ladies against me in his vendetta? Yes, whoever does become the lollipop queen does control all of the other lollipop ladies in the world. And working together, they could do pretty much anything they wanted, take over any political party. Um, No army could stand against them. Not at all, no. I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I either let my greatest enemy who claims to be reformed, have the ultimate power. Or I let myself become the very thing I hate most, 
If Mr. Winters becomes a lollipop queen, he'll command the lollipop ladies. He'll have power over the entire world. And, well, the things that he's done just with him and Mr. Cornelius Whiskers, they've been elaborate enough. If he had the resources of the lollipop ladies, all the millions and millions of pounds that that organization has access to. Just think, we'd, Nathan. We'd be doomed, Kyle. You're on your way to work. He puts up traffic cones, stopping you from passing down the street. You would have to but go the I long way around. It will take I... you an extra 10 minutes and you're going to be late and your boss will shout at you. Oh, no, no, I'm walking across the road and suddenly Lollipop Lady is burst out of the trees and they place cones in front of me and behind me. I can't escape. It's you, you're trapped in a circle field. of cones. How, how could you possibly escape a circle of cones? It's, in, it's, it's unthinkable, Carl. I can't. But if I, if I become the lollipop queen, I'll be surrounded by stop signs. I'll be telling people to stop all the time. And not in a cool way. I won't then tell them it's hammer time. No. I'll just be telling them to stop and then go. Like some loser. This is such a difficult decision. And I think there's only one thing that can be done. Mr. Winters is my most dangerous nemesis. Since that day I stole his newspaper, he's been out to destroy me. I cannot allow him access to the power of the lollipop ladies. And so with a heavy heart, I burst forward from my chair, push him out of the way, sit in the throne, and the crown of the lollipop queen rests upon my head. As soon as the crown touches your skull, your entire being fills with the mightiest power of the lollipop ladies. You rise from your chair, you rise from the ground, you're floating above the ground. Your hair becomes long and bedraggled, your face becomes wrinkled and old, and a giant lollipop stick forms in your hand. And you know what, Kyle? Yeah. It feels good. You yell out, stop! And everyone cheers. And they wait for me to turn the, turn the sign around and tell them to go. Go and do my work. The work of the Lollipop King! <gasps> There's an audible gasp and you turn the sign around. It says go and they charge into the world to do your bidding. Mr. I Winters... Stand in the building the highest window watching them watching my subjects miss cornelius whiskers comes over helps up mr winters he looks up at you you monster nathan how could you do this to me you monster and they run off into the night to plot their revenge what are you going to do about it winters you can't stop me i am the one that stops people now He's right. He's right, Mr. Winters. There's nothing we can do. He has all the power. Now go! Leave this place! <laughs> the sign turns around to go, and they rush from the building. I considered missing this call, Carl. As the Lollipop King, I have much important business to attend to, but the Lollipop King must be loyal. Yes. If nothing else. And I made an agreement with you. Though I must warn you, Kyle, don't get in our way. For I have lollipop ladies everywhere. They see you on your way to work. They could stop you from crossing the road any time I wish. And we have established they do live in the bushes, so... Yeah. They live in the bushes. They live under the, under the sewer grates. They live in the road cones. They live in the bushes. They live in the trees. They live in the toilets. They live in the seas. Is exactly. is their their classic this rhyme? This world is covered, circled by my lollipop legion. You would be a fool not to go along with our plans. Otherwise, I'll be forced to stop you for good. You are the one who can stop. I am the one who can stop. So yeah, that's been my week. Um, yeah. You know, just the uh, standard. I've now become the most powerful being in all the world, and uh, my um. My my legion of lollipop ladies will soon uh, conquer the um, however many continents of this planet that exist. I don't need to know geography. I have people who know things for me now. Cool. If you had to, though, sponsored by Cheesy Noblets. And now, here is a word from our sponsors. Godzillion Dollar Ideas! Godzillion Dollar Ideas! 
the show where we take a randomly selected prompt and invent a new invention, product, or idea that will revolutionise the world. And make godzillions of dollars. I'm Kyle. And I am Nathan. And this is our new podcast. Has this ever happened to you? Oh gosh, oh golly. I really wish I had godzillions of dollars, but I don't. Well, now you can, pathetic little child. Godzillion Dollar Ideas! Our new podcast, brought to you from the If You Had To Low Podomatic Universe. Find it at patreon.com slash if you had to though, or on YouTube or Spotify or wherever. Godzillion Dollar Ideas, sponsored by Crispy Crunch Toothpaste. And now, back to the show. And I mean, it's it's not even worth bringing up what you've been up to because now you're just a lowly subject, barely barely good enough to um to walk beneath beneath the dirt on my feet. But all oh, right, okay. Well, this has been if you had to though. Well, uh, like I said, I'm contractually obliged. Oh yes, you. of course we must finish the podcast. <laughs> yes, we I mean we're contractually ob- obliged by the the witch hag, the only force more powerful than the lollipop (laughs) lollipop ladies (laughs) the ancient egyptian witch that cursed us yes of course once we get to episode 1000 we'll be fine my lollipop ladies will gain enough power and eventually even she will bow to the lollipops you're gonna try and overthrow the witch of egypt yes okay i'm gonna put her in a bright fluorescent jacket and give her a stop sign but you kyle while well, I've been becoming more powerful than you could possibly imagine. You, Kyle, were at home in your mansion in Cloud City, and you were feeling in the mood for a drink, feeling a little parched. So you go to the food Coolatron 9000, and you open the door to grab a nice, refreshing beverage. You grab your can of premium alcohol-flavoured alcohol, and you take a sip. Delicious. Suddenly, your creepy psychic son, Jeffrey, comes out. Morning, and Jeffrey. Jeffrey, Jeffrey has entered his rebellious teenage phase, uh, and he's been playing a lot of pranks on you lately. So he comes out laughing, although he laughs a monotone laugh. Ha ha ha, father. I have pranked you, father. I replaced your alcohol with a chemical brew of my own invention, a brain-enhancing compound that will make you trip all of the spheroids. Ha ah, Oh, just just the one ha, Jeffrey. I, I, I see. It's a funny prank. Yes, uh, no. D- 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 generally, Jeffrey, um, people do at least two ha, like ha ha or ha ha ha. I, I, I shall I, I, take that into consideration, Father. Good. Ha good. ha. There, there we go. And um, he then walks sideways out of the room. But old, good old, fun-loving Jeffrey made a miscalculation and that compound does more than simply give you a trip your mind is enhanced to the highest potential your brain actually grows three times in size and you can now physically see it pulsating atop your skull this has now given you mental abilities previously undreamed of but there are two ways these abilities could be used one is you control all of humanity and everyone around you is subject to your will, but they have no will of their own. Everyone's ability for independent thought is lost, and without you, they won't do anything at all. They require you to tell them what to do, what to say, where to go, or your mind links with everyone else on the planet, and all your thoughts and feelings are shared throughout the world, and eventually all of humanity will form a hive mind where there is no individual thought. I see. So either I can puppet master the world and make everyone my little playthings and uh, make them do whatever I want, or I make everyone into me. Yes, exactly. Everyone would have your personality and consciousness, um, but it, and basically everyone would have a hive mind, so everyone would be doing everything at the same time, saying the same thing at the same time, thinking the same thing at the same time. Yeah, everyone would be working towards my goals when you get up when you go to bed the whole planet goes to bed when you get up the whole planet gets up nathan that would be amazing do you know why because there's not going to be anyone partying loudly next door (laughs) you know 
you know that I'm a cranky old man and I do not like people partying like outside people partying my window. Next door. No, I don't want people playing loud music. I won't have people playing music that I don't enjoy. Everyone will play the music that I like. Everyone will watch Everyone the films will play that the I like. the exact same music that you're playing at the exact same time that you're playing it. Wow, across the entire world. You just have this big booming <laughs> YMCA across the entire world. I can't think of anything better. But let's go to the other scenario where I'm puppet master of the world and I can control everyone and make everyone do whatever I want. They are still... Are they still there? They still live their own individual lives. Um, They still live their own individual lives, but they need you to tell them what to do. They're incapable of doing anything unless you tell them to. Oh, so it's like playing The Sims. Kind of. So basically, people will just be standing motionless in the street until you walk along and you say to them, Okay, it's time for you to go to work. Uh, you should probably eat something. Um, you you really should um, clean up that piss stain on your trousers there. Yeah. So yeah, it would be completely like playing The Sims. I'd be clicking on one person. Right, you need to go to the toilet. Right, you're hungry. You need to have some food. Your hygiene is bad. You need to go and have a shower. You need to go yeah. to work. You need to do this. And I would have to do that for every person in the entire world. I mean, if you wanted to, if, if you, I, I mean, you could to, just leave yeah. half the planet to die. Yeah, but I mean, hmm, I probably would leave most of the planet to die because I'm not going around the entire world. I mean, to also be fair, I mean, you would have to go to the airport, find a um, pilot, tell him, fly this plane. Also, don't crash. You'd have to sit in the pilot seat with him and like tell him how to pilot the plane. Yeah, and I don't even know myself how to pilot a plane no so that would be quite difficult so getting getting abroad would be difficult for you because everyone else is incapable of doing anything unless you tell them to do it and if you don't know how to do it they won't know how to do it yeah so say i wanted to i don't know uh play a game of pool with someone I would say, you must play a game of pool against me. Would they know how to play pool? Or would I have no, to tell them... No, they would them... literally need you to guide them every step of the way. Yeah. They would get in position, but they wouldn't... They would get ready to play pool. They'd be standing there with a stick. But they wouldn't hit the ball until you told them to. And they wouldn't aim the cue until you told them where to aim it to. Yeah, that would get very tedious. So basically, the main difference between these two scenarios... both In both scenarios, you essentially control the world of your mind. Yeah. But for one, it's instantaneous. You don't even have to think of it. Everyone's simply doing what you do as you do it. The other one, you actively have to tell people what to do everywhere you go. Hmm. Now, ev- does everyone still look like themselves? or if? Oh, if... yeah, no one's physically changed. Okay, they, look, they because, look like they are. Because my personality is okay. But if you have everyone looking like me, I mean... I mean, you can make them have a makeover and make them look like you. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, I'm not saying I want this, not at all, because I wouldn't want, you know... To look at that. No, I, wouldn't I can't want to look at, No, I wouldn't want to look at myself constantly. Okay, so, yeah, if everyone's thinking the same as me, say I want to create something. Say I want to build a statue of myself in my own honour. Everyone in the do. world is working towards that same goal. So I can get things done a lot faster. In what scenario is this? What when your when your mind is when everyone is doing exactly what you're doing? I suppose I suppose it it would yeah it would be easier that way than telling individual people build a statue. And you would have to tell them how to weld, how to hammer. Yeah, no, I yeah, I, I'm thinking I'm, unless you can think the of any is, positives. With the other scenario when yeah. everyone's doing what you're doing. Like maybe they could be working on separate statues from you, but they couldn't help you with your statue because while you're hammering something or while you're moving a piece in one position, they'll be doing that exact same motion. So you I couldn't see. be like, you couldn't be carving the leg and have someone else carve the arm because they'd be doing the exact same physical motions as you're doing as you're doing them. Ah, okay. So it's just a bunch of me's doing the same thing across the entire world at the same time. Yeah. And honestly, because everyone's minds is linked, eventually you'll forget which one of you is the original you. 
Yeah, there is that. I'm also thinking my favourite foods I will obviously go out and buy, but so will everyone else. So all of the things I like will be bought out instantly. Exactly. Well, everyone will go to the shop at the exact same time as you, so everyone will be buying them at the same time. Yeah. And no one's going to be making new stuff because everyone right. everyone's doing what I'm doing unless I'm making unless stuff. You, yeah, unless you go make new stuff and then make every, other people make new stuff. <sighs> oh, I can't be bothered to do that. So maybe it would be better. I've, I've 360 now. I'm thinking it might be better to just tell people to do things for me. And then, you know, if... if You just have to make sure that your instructions are very precise. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'll go, go get that um, newspaper for me, but don't walk into traffic... I mean, no, there isn't going to be any traffic. You're Pe- right. You're people will only, yeah, people will only drive if I tell them to. Planes will co- planes will crash from the sky when this happens immediately. About 10 million people will die in the first five seconds. Yeah, to start with, a lot of people will die. But then I'll... It, basically, everyone who's just standing around doing nothing, every time I pass someone, I'll say, oh, go and eat and drink something so you don't die. Yeah. Uh, go and eat and drink something. And then there'll at least be a few people alive that I can control and make do my bidding. Exactly. Um, I mean, the only other people in the world that aren't subject to your will would be the lollipop ladies. Ah, I see. minds are incorruptible. So I would want to take those guys down instantly. So I'm you gonna would have be to our main competition. Yeah, I'm gonna and have like to. I told you it would be a mistake to cross us. We're the ones that cross or don't cross the street. But I now have a group of people who are willing to do things without thinking about it. Like they have no thoughts of their own. I say charge and attack and kill these lollipop ladies. They're doing it, throwing their lives away for me, without even considering right. it we, we turn the signs to tell them to tell them to stop and they don't stop we're powerless <laughs> i mean yeah it's good like obviously there that is their one mission is go and try to kill someone like anything else they won't be able to see like if you do a maneuver move out of the way whatever so yes i've got the entire planet to fight you but you have the smarts and the logic uh, so yeah. it will if be... you're not physically with them when they're fighting us, their mind is so blank they won't be able to do anything but the thing that you'd last told them to do. So if you tell them go stab that woman and then we dodge, they'll just be trying to stab us forever, even yes. if we're like standing up the top of a building and they're stabbing the air in front of them. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I'm going for. So this war between uh, me and you, pretty much. It's it's going to be an interesting one over the. It is, weeks. and honestly, I mean, it's surprising we decided to do this podcast, considering um, the planet is now filled either with mindless slaves of of you or lollipop ladies, and lollipop ladies don't really fit into our key demographic. No, um, well, the only reason we're still doing this podcast is because of the witch, who's the only person who isn't on either of our sides. You're right. Maybe we should team up, Kyle team up and fight the witch of egypt yes of course it all makes sense now we'll never have to do another podcast again (laughs) well that's right all these idiots that listen to us we'll never have to deal with those despicable scum again i mean they only listen to the podcast because i tell them to listen to the podcast otherwise they wouldn't know what they're doing no exactly yeah i mean actually we will have the largest fan base we've ever had we'll have the only fan base in the, in the yeah, entire right. world. No one will like any other podcast. All other podcasts will stop, but previous episodes won't be listened to. I mean, unless you ask them to listen to them. Yeah, I mean, now I want to carry on doing the podcast, actually. Um, now that we're popular... Yeah, maybe, the... we, maybe we'll wait to destroy the, the Witch Queen of Egypt um, until after we've gotten to the, at least to the Tutanani. Yes, we'll do the Tutanani and then we'll uh, reconvene and see what happens. So this has been quite a uh, interesting, world-changing episode. It has. You and I, Carl, have become world leaders of unparalleled power. We have indeed. Um, and while our interests may align at the moment, we both know it will eventually come down to either you or me. I look forward to that day. A temporary truce. Yes, for now, we shall stop these hostilities. But I'm ready to 
to go whenever you are. And I'm ready to put a stop to you when the time comes. So, uh, this has been If You Had To, though. If you liked the episode, then please follow and subscribe to the podcast on Patreon. You can find it at patreon.com slash if you had to, though. Uh, you can follow me on I mean, Twitter. I mean, you have to like it because <laughs> you have Carl's to. telling you to. I'm telling you to, so go do it. Um, yeah, you don't have a choice. Uh, and also, you don't have a choice but to follow me on Twitter, Kyle M. Bennett. That's Kyle underscore M underscore Bennett with two N's and two T's. And you can follow me uh, at N Vozniak Art, uh, which is N for November or N for Nathan uh, W as like how you spell W's. I don't want to spell it my whole name. It's N. It's. <laughs> I'm so confused. Okay. Um, yeah, we're going to no, skip on, yours for today. That. I think I'm so used to my current job, I'm using the phonetic alphabet, and I forgot how that <laughs> you couldn't say N in November. Okay. You can follow me at Twitter on you can follow nah, you can follow me on Twitter at N Vosniak Art, which is N for Nathan and then W O Z N I A K and then Art. And I would advise that you do, because it wouldn't be wise to cross the Lollipop King. This has been if you had to though. I have been your ruler and uh, omnipotent being of the entire universe. And I control the roads, the crosswalk the zebra crossings. You best fear me.